Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a very big snowstorm for portions of the interior northeast, the Great Lakes, and the Midwest. We're also going to be talking about that potential cold air mass that could dip down right around Christmas week in December. So it will be a very, very uh, potentially interesting Christmas week. This is this might be one of the uh, colder Christmases that we've seen in quite a while. So that'll be something that is very interesting uh, and something that I will talk about later on in the video. And again, we're just going to be talking about that potentially big snowstorm for portions of the Great Lakes and the interior northeast. Some of these areas could be picking up as much as 4 to 6 inches. No official snowfall forecast in today's video, so I won't be giving you my exact thoughts on that. Although, if you do have any questions about this storm, feel free to leave them down below, and I answer pretty much all of your uh, comments, or I at least leave that little heart icon uh, just to show you that even if you didn't uh, ask a question, I'll, I'll just uh, kind of notify you that I at least saw your comment. So, here to be the current National Weather Service page uh, and we have pretty much nothing going on for much of the United States. The only thing I really see that's significant is those air quality alerts and dense smoke advisories uh, or uh, dense fog advisories in effect for portions of Oregon there and other than that there's really not a lot going on. A couple watches and warnings here and there but again it's a very very nice uh, day for much of the United States right now. So here would be uh, that cold air mass that we're talking about. So let's start talking about the polar vortex. And I know you guys know a lot about the polar vortex. You've heard it probably a lot on the news. Uh, but this really originates uh, probably right right around 90,000 to 105,000 feet up in the atmosphere. And that is going to take a while for that air from 90,000 feet up in the atmosphere to make its way all the way down to the surface. And so that usually takes about 7 to 14 days. So 1 to 2 weeks for that to translate down to the surface. So here's what the polar vortex looks like right now. You see that we have some of the darker blue for portions of the Arctic Circle. That's because we have a very, very strong polar vortex by this point. We are seeing a couple of dips in the jet stream here and there. Uh, so it is not, it's not the strongest polar vortex, and that's actually a good thing if you want cold and snow. You usually don't want a strong polar vortex because what that means is that you get a winter like last year where it gets wrapped up because the stronger the polar vortex is, the harder it is to get uh, to kind of get it to come down eventually so you want it to be kind of weak if you like cold because that means that you'll get frequent uh, troughs and ridges all over uh, the place and they're eventually and, and eventually you will get into a colder pattern if you get a wrapped up polar vortex it will take quite a while for you to get into some of that colder air so this is what the polar vortex looks like right now and let's go about seven days later or eight days later and here's by November 28th so this would be by Saturday the, the 28th we're looking at an elongated polar vortex that means that this polar vortex is getting close to splitting uh, in, in two ways and when you get that you can actually get quite cold for uh, parts of North America and parts of Northern Europe there uh, so we are dealing with a colder pattern this would be by November 28th but remember it'll take one to two weeks to translate down to the surface and that means that most likely right around December uh, I would say probably right around the 8th or 9th is the most likely time that this would this pattern would come into the United States and by this point you would actually be dealing with a trough in the west a ridge in the east or somewhat of a ridge in the eastern United States so for my uh, for my viewers out in the western United States and that's uh, when you could probably deal with your coldest conditions of the season uh, so far. So it will be fairly cold. But then look what happens later on. It starts to shift a lot further to the east. Remember, it was back over here uh, beforehand. Now it's over Greenland and that general region. And that means that you're going to have a trough that digs in somewhat like this. So your trough is going to be fairly far to the east. You're going to have a little bit of ridging uh, over the western United States. That polar vortex has now shifted a little bit. It has become a little bit more of a circle shape by this point, which means that it's strengthening a little bit. Although, a little system that moves through the Arctic Circle could really bring out the polar vortex once again. This is not the strongest polar vortex that we've ever seen. Uh, so, this would uh, mean if you add that one to two weeks, that's closer to December 20th. Uh, so, that's only five days away from Christmas. It might be one of your uh, first chances in quite a while to get one of those uh, white Christmases where you have a little bit of snow on the ground. So, uh, that'll definitely be very interesting and we'll have to time that out closer to that actual event. Now, here would be what the GFS is showing for the storm. And again, we'll also look at the European model in just a little bit. Now, 
you see that little uh, thunderstorm activity moving through portions of the of Texas and New Mexico. That is your system, and it's a very weak system. This one will pull out into uh, right around Missouri and Illinois. Then it'll move. Uh, you'll see another system move out into Colorado, and this one will really be your big powerhouse that moves into the north central United States, brings a little bit of snowfall for these areas. So uh, let's play this out. So here to be by. Uh, Monday uh, right around 12 in the morning so it is going to be fairly early by this point and as we continue forward you start to see that moisture be pulled a little bit further to the north now here would be uh, by probably right around Monday 12 p.m. and we're looking at some mixing uh, potentially on the onset for portions of Iowa there we're dealing with a little bit of that moisture being pulled up from the Gulf of Mexico if you're just following these isobars on the screen uh, and you can see where that moisture is being pulled up from and it's a very moisture uh, filled area the Gulf of Mexico and it has a lot of moist air that's just being pulled up and so when that meets up with this colder uh, air mass that's kind of sitting over the eastern United States by this point it will get uh, potentially a little chilly and you might even be able to pump out a little bit of snowfall but this is not your big system if you actually look at uh, look look at what happens this really falls apart what we're gonna see is this system come out of Colorado you now have a surface low pressure system out in portions of Colorado Kansas, uh, Kansas and Nebraska we're dealing with that high pressure again kind of like this high pressure is still the surface high pressure is still out in uh, southern and southeastern Canada we're dealing with that cold polar flow and we're dealing with potentially some snowfall on the northern fringe of that and that's not really associated with any cold air that this system is pulling down it's just mainly because those are your average low temperatures this is this would be right around midnight uh, on Monday going into Tuesday and we're looking at uh, potentially your low temperatures right around average closer to 30 or 31 in parts of Min uh, Minnesota and North Dakota and that's enough to pump out a little bit of snowfall out of this event and I think this this is going to be one of those events where you start off as rain for many of these regions and then it switches over uh, or you start off or you start off as snow a little bit of snow maybe a light accumulation then it all washes away as rain uh, later on in the system now as we go forward a little bit more you start to see some more snowfall pop up for portions of Wisconsin and Minnesota here's by Tuesday right around 6 a.m. here's by 12 p.m. on Tuesday heavier snow now moving through parts of the Great Lakes that low pressure is now out in parts of Minnesota and Iowa we have another low pressure system starting to break off into Oklahoma and Texas and as we continue forward that system drape uh, that system drapes up that system from Texas and Oklahoma it kind of carries it out and now will end up becoming another system that we have to deal with so you're dealing with that convective activity from Indiana to Arkansas and then you start to see the system break off from this main trough that's kind of digging into the eastern United States it gets left behind so what we're gonna deal with is a big wrapped up low pressure system that'll drive up your winds and also bring quite a bit of rain so if we actually continue this forward here would be by Wednesday afternoon as we're getting to Wednesday evening here's by Thursday right around 12 in the morning Thursday right around 6 in the morning and here's by 12 p.m. on Thursday that system becomes a uh, somewhat of a nor'easter it's not gonna have a lot of winds with it but it'll also be kind of a nuisance and it'll bring a little bit of rain with it so if you are wondering what the rainfall threats are here's the weather prediction center's rainfall outlook for the next seven days and anywhere in those uh, lighter blues that's 1.25 inches to one and a half inches and then you're even dealing with some reds and purples that's where you're looking at uh, two and a half to about four inches of rainfall in some portions of Missouri Illinois and Indiana there so uh, definitely it could be a very very wet uh, period that we're going to be going through now here would be what the European model is showing and then we'll look at your total snowfall uh, forecast from these two models now we're dealing with that system moving out of the northeast but we have those showers moving through parts of Kansas Nebraska Iowa that's your system that pulled through and we're starting to see that system come out of Colorado that we saw in the GFS and bring potentially some snowfall on the onset here's what the, the uh, European is showing we're dealing with some uh, potential mixing for northern Illinois, southern Minnesota, snow as you get further to north, rain of course as you get further to the south, and this would be right around 6 in the morning. Here's by 12 p.m. That rain snow line just because of the 32 degree line being a little bit further to the north, just because it's a little bit brighter outside and the sun has come out warming up the surface, it will uh, most likely bring that rain snow line a little bit further to the north as we get through the day on Tuesday. Here's by 6 p.m. 
p.m. and then here's by uh, midnight on Wednesday, 12 p. Uh, uh, yeah, 12 p.m. and we're looking at, uh, or this will actually be 12 a.m. on Wednesday, and we're looking at some of that rain and snow mix for northern Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan, mainly some convective activity out in parts of Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma. And as we continue forward, that system moves out further to the east, and I'll actually play that back a little bit because portions of the interior and northeast now start to get into some of that snow. Here's by Wednesday, right around 5 in the morning Eastern Time, and then here would be uh, by right around 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, and we're looking at some of that rain and snow for portions of the Northeast. Heavier rains as we get back out into the Tennessee and Ohio River rallies, and then as we continue forward, we start to see that system actually intensify, uh, and we start to see that other nor'easter-like system move through portions of the Central United States. So we have a very, very active and very, very interesting pattern definitely in play. Now here's what the European model shows for snowfall under an inch to two inches of snowfall in those grays, 2 to 6 inches in the blues, 6 to 10 in the purples, and we're dealing with potentially closer to 6 to 10 in portions of the interior northeast. That's mainly because you'll get hit with about one or two more systems added on to what you've already seen, but that 2 to 6 inches for portions of the Great Lakes, I think that's a little bit overdone for areas further to the south, but definitely portions of the upper Great Lakes could see closer to 4 inches or more of snowfall. Here is what the GFS model is showing, and we're dealing with potentially 2 to 6 inches of snowfall in portions of the upper Great Lakes, but it is showing a lot less snowfall, definitely, compared to what the European model was showing. So, if you did enjoy this video, please consider liking, uh, liking the video, uh, subscribing, and turning on notifications. Also, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section, and I answer pretty much all of your questions. Uh, and those of you who have, who have commented on my channel in the past know that I usually get back to you quite quickly. Usually when I get that notification that somebody commented, I try to hop on as quick as I can. So uh, so if I don't answer you within about four or five hours, that's when you know I probably didn't get the notification. So just uh, comment once again on a different thread, and I'll probably get the notification then. So uh, definitely if you have any questions, leave them down below. Leave a like, turn on notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.